green hair. Welcome to another episode of the Focal Length Challenge. Today we are gonna be shooting at 16 millimeters. Now I know I asked you guys in the last video what focal length you would like to see next and a lot of you guys said 85, um, 100, and I had all of the intentions to be doing 85 for this video, but got super inspired. We went to Vancouver. I decided on 16 millimeters, so we'll save 85 for the next video. In this video, we're taking you guys all the way back to Vancouver, the place where it all started for us, the place we started our YouTube channel, and we're gonna be meeting up with a few friends you guys might recognize to shoot some photos at 16 millimeters. I love a wide lens. I used to shoot at 16 all of the time before I got the 24 prime. I do love a good 16 mil lens. It's funky, it's wide. It's just like all around a good time. Like if you were going to a party and lenses were gonna show up, like 16 millimeters would be like the life of the party. 16 be like, yo dudes, what's up man? Here to party. That's, is that how people do the parties? So yeah, I love, love, love a wide lens, especially for travel, which is why I wanted to shoot 16 on this trip. All right, let's dive in and see what 16 millimeters is good for. This is a series, a non-technical workshop series where we explore different focal lengths while shooting a variety of subjects. This is the Focal Length Challenge. <laughs> we just landed in Vancouver for the first time since we left in 2017. We lived here for like a year and two or three months. We have not been back since. We're at Shannon Falls now. We're doing the 16 millimeter focal length challenge. I never really shot photos with a 16 F4. Normally I do the 2.8 but I only have the 16 F4, so that's what we're gonna use today. Make the most of it. Make the most of it. It's really weird being back here. So this is a snag full of life. Okay, we had to pull off at this forest because it's so epic. It's like covered in moss and a little bit foggy. So we're gonna shoot some 16 millimeter photos here. I haven't shot at 16 millimeters in like a very long time. I feel like with 16 millimeters, sometimes people can kind of get turned off by the distortion, but there's definitely ways to use it to your advantage. It's a huge trend on Instagram with all these travel influencer ladies. They use a super wide lens, like a 16 mil. And what they'll do is they'll stand up nice and tall, stick out one leg, and what that does is the distortion of the lens actually creates this really long lean look. So it's making you look skinny and these girls are using it to their advantage. Hell yeah. Yeah. I also find with stuff that has natural lines, like a building, like it's got all these really straight lines. And when you do go straight up and like wide open and you're, and you're framing it like that, you get some distortion and it, it's almost like you're starting to see curved lines, but it almost looks kind of cool when you have super straight lines that then are curving in this like really natural rate. Like, and especially if you like put someone right in the center, like right in the center, and then you have these lines kind of bowing out because of the distortion, that's a cool look mm -hmm. as well. Hashtag yeah. effects, lens effects. <laughs> Here all week. I think I've always gravitated towards like a wider lens. Uh, 16 and 24 mil are like usually like my go-tos for everything. The coolest thing about like 16 mil for landscape photography is that typically when you're shooting, people will like shoot from this height at 16 mil and like they'll be like, oh, look at everything that's super wide. But if you bring it down low and you use the um, the edge of the frames, let's say the frame is like this, and you bring it nice and low and you put all this stuff in the foreground, you can actually capture a lot more of that scenery by bringing in the small details right in the front of the frame while also uh, still keeping that landscape and that mountain and that other object in the frame as well at the top. So for example, let's see the moss here. You can bring all of this into the frame while still capturing the trees and that's a really cool way of using the 16 mil lens to make an interesting shot and landscape shot. May I, may I add a, a touch? This is, this is the angel on my shoulder. Hey. This is the devil. <laughs> Don't do it. Oh, but I like your note about getting low, but at the same time, I feel like you could take it at eye level. Just instead of holding your camera like this, you just tip it down a little in order to get what's a little closer to the foreground. But it's a really cool effect and it adds, it adds a lot of depth to your photo. So take it from this guy, landscape king over here. <laughs> Boop. Little LK. Little LK. Little LK. <laughs> LK crown. Ding, ding, ding. Like in case we get lost tonight, I have a spear that we can find a wild boar and just. Um, I haven't okay. heard the drone in a <laughs> So 16 mil lenses. Um, really. 
<laughs> really great for catching just boar. putting this out there i haven't heard the drone in quite quite a while yeah oh. i haven't heard the drone or anything uh -oh. about dr chris nicholas dr chris you lie bro oh boy so we ended up finding chris after after traipsing through the woods looking for him it turns out he was at the car classic Okay, so 16 millimeters, super fun for creative portraits, for travel. I love it for trips, for documenting trips, because it's fun for architecture, it's fun for food, it's fun for taking pictures of people, rooms, it's just all around a good time. Now 16 millimeters isn't really a lens you're gonna grab for professional portraits. There's a lot of distortion, and it's not the most flattering lens, for portrait photography. It's a really fun focal length. You can get super creative. It's so good for like editorial, advertising, commercial photography when you're not getting super close to a person's face. When you put a person or a subject inside of like a landscape, it's really interesting, especially if you kind of get down low and shoot up or get up high and shoot down. When you're shooting at 16 millimeters, you kind of have to be creative and work with the distortion. Instead of looking at the distortion as a bad thing, look at it as an asset. So how does it perform the best? As Chris mentioned earlier in this video, getting down low and seeing things in the foreground, that's really cool. And then Lizzie mentioned getting up high and shooting down. So we did that when we went to the ramen shop. I kind of got up and shot down a little bit at the ramen, and that kind of gave a little bit more of an interesting look versus just like a normal flat lay that you normally see on Instagram. It's a little bit different. It tells more of a story. The noodles are kind of coming up. You can see the steam. Chris is in the background. And it's just a bit more of an interesting look, a bit more of a story versus just a normal flat lay. Now, a flat lay can work really well for a menu or a website or for Instagram, but sometimes if you're shooting travel or you want some more personality in your shot, then a shot like this works really well. So for this shot here, we really use the distortion of the 16 millimeter lens to our advantage. We had Chris put his foot near the lens, so that kind of made it really big in the frame. And then he pointed his hand up towards the other side of the frame and it kind of gave him this long distorted look, but it was really interesting. It's different than like a normal portrait or back on photo that you would see on Instagram. It's a little bit artsy, a little more creative and a lot of fun. Something else I love about 16 mil is that if you're doing like a normal travel, you're just documenting your trip casually, it's just fun to shoot all the things that you're doing with the 60 millimeter lens. Now, as I mentioned, the distortion can be distracting, but it is fun if you're just snapping away photos and documenting your trip. Um, maybe they're not portfolio pieces, but they are maybe something you're gonna hold as a memory to your trip. So as you can see in these pictures here, I kind of shot a photo of Chris with his laptop and you can see like how wide the field of view is. And uh, we just love this lens for shooting stuff like this. Here's a good example of how the distortion makes your face look if you're really close to the lens. So obviously my eyes in the shot look super exaggerated. My face looks very distorted. It can be super fun, especially if you're shooting advertising where the distortion really lends itself to the product maybe you're selling. In a normal headshot, not so great, but we love it for documenting our trips. Going back to this photo of Johnny in the forest, I love stepping back with this lens and putting something, a subject or something in the center of the photo and his jacket really pops against the forest here. And you get this really cool effect with the trees. We kind of got down low and shot up. Just shooting up at the trees kind of gives it this like really interesting and exaggerated perspective. That's what I think that 16 is so cool for. You can really use it to tell stories. One of my favorite shots from this trip was this portrait I shot of Chris. Um, shooting really wide and then getting close up, you're gonna get a lot of things in the background. Again, you're getting distortion, but in the shot you can really feel the wind with the movement of his hood and the rain on his jacket. So that was a lot of fun to shoot. So for this shoot, I was shooting with the 16 to 35 F4 at 16 millimeters. Um, in the past, I've shot with a 16 F2.8, and I did find that I definitely missed the extra stop of light on this trip with the F4 lens, but it was still a lot of fun to shoot with and just an all around interesting field of view. Some things we didn't show in this video, the 16 mm lens is fantastic for room shots. It definitely makes a room look bigger, which may or may not be good for the client you're working with, but I definitely like it to show the most things you can possibly show in a room, stepping back and really getting a good feel for what's in the space. Uh, really good for interiors, great for architecture, especially if you get down low and shoot up, that's a lot of fun. Uh, in the video world, 16 millimeters is fantastic for vlogging. A lot of the vlogs that we shoot, especially on our A7S II, we're shooting at 16 millimeters to get two people in the frame. So we really like that field of view for video. For B-roll, 
simple, wide shots, great close-up details, that creamy depth of field, you're not going to get it with a 16mm lens. Yeah, this is definitely good for wide shots, you want to see a lot of things, you want to get creative, you want to get a bit artsy, you want a little bit of a different field of view. We love the 16 millimeter for all of those things. Throughout this trip, I did shoot a couple of sets of photos that you can see on our Instagram. Some at 16 millimeters, some not. So if you wanna check that out, we're at Becky and Chris on Instagram. Well, I think that's it. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video, this deep dive into what a 16 millimeter lens on a full frame looks like. I love, 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 love a wide lens. I think the 24 is still my favorite, but it was definitely fun to go back and shoot with the 16 mil. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you like the distortion? Do you hate it? And if you're looking for a comparable focal length on a crop body camera, a 10 millimeter lens will give you roughly the same look as a 16 will on a full frame camera. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Thank you to Johnny and Iz and Lizzie and Chris and Dr. Chris for being in this video and for Chris for shooting the drone clips. I shouldn't have to thank him. His name is on the channel, Chris. Just saying thank you to everybody and then I said thank you for shooting drone shots and then I realized that you're, this is your channel as well. You look so cute in those. She bought me this silly suit off Amazon. I did. And it's my new tuxedo. I love it. Do you have anything to add about the 60 millimeter lens? Uh, 60 millimeter, great folk length, wide. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Great. <laughs> Valuable content. Value added. Okay, get out of here. Okay, so if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. So we'll see you on the next one.